what does this airplane, this airplane, and this airplane all have in common? You're not going to believe it, but we're going to tell you on Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. These three airplanes are the favorites of their pilots. During the course of my 40-year career, I've had the honor and privilege of working with some of the legendary pilots from the 20th century, and I have chosen 10 uh, to represent uh, this uh, program for their favorite airplanes. I've always asked during the process of doing a painting uh, of uh, all the airplanes they've flown in their careers, is any uh, airplane uh, special? Does it stand out as their favorite? And without hesitation, every single pilot had an immediate answer as to their favorite airplane. And I thought I'd share some of those stories with you in this episode. Here's my top 10 list. And uh, these were based on the projects that I had with these gentlemen uh, and talking about their favorite airplanes. And I thought uh, this would be a good representative sampling of what we're gonna talk about in this presentation. So let's start with Brigadier General Chuck Yeager. Considered the greatest test pilot who ever lived, Brigadier General Charles E. Chuck Yeager was, in every sense of the term, one of a kind. A flying sergeant during World War II, Yeager became a formidable fighter pilot and ace flying P-51 Mustangs over Germany. Based at Wright Field after the war, Yeager began his flight test career and soon moved to Muroc, California, now known as Edwards Air Force Base. Flying a new bullet-shaped rocket plane called the Bell X-1 put Yeager's name firmly in the history books when he became the first man to fly faster than the speed of sound in October of 1947. Six years later, he flew the larger improved Bell X-1A to a speed of Mach 2.44, the first flight faster than twice the speed of sound. What followed were operational assignments in a variety of new Air Force aircraft, plus a stint as Commandant of ARPS, the Aerospace Research Pilot School, flying rocket-boosted NF-104s to altitudes in excess of 100,000 feet. In 1996, Yeager became the first honorary chairman of the EAA's Young Eagles program, introducing air-minded young Americans to the magic of flight. That's my daughter, Melissa, in the rear cockpit of the T-34 on her Young Eagles flight with Chuck Yeager. Another combat fighter pilot during World War II was Robert A. Bob Hoover, who quickly established his reputation as being the best of the best. Flying as an Air Force test pilot after the war and then working for North American Aviation following his Air Force career, uh, he tested the F-86 and F-100, which led to Hoover becoming a demonstration pilot for the company. It was only natural that these aerobatic flights led to Bob evolving into the world's greatest air show performer. For nearly four decades, Hoover dazzled air show crowds around the world with his incredible aerobatic routines like the Tennessee Waltz landing one wheel at a time, as shown here in his P-51 named Old Yeller, or flying his Rockwell Shrike Commander with both props feathered. It is only fitting that Bob's uh, commander is now permanently displayed at the Udvar Hazy Center of the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum under the wing of a Mach 2 Concorde. Like his contemporaries Chuck Yeager and Bob Hoover, Pete Everest began his Air Force career flying combat missions during World War II, first in the Curtis P-40 and then the P-51 Mustang shown here. As chief of flight test at Edwards Air Force Base in the 1950s, Everest witnessed the dawn of operational supersonic jet aircraft, setting a world speed record in the F-100 Super Sabre and test flying all types of new Air Force aircraft from jet trainer proposals to Century Series fighters like this F-102 Delta Dagger. However, Everest's name will be forever synonymous with the sleek and exotic Bell X-2 rocket plane. He flew all the initial Air Force test flights and achieved a record speed of Mach 2.87 in July of 1956, earning him the nickname Fastest Man Alive, which was also the title of his autobiography. Well, believe it or not, Chuck Yeager, his friend Bob Hoover and Pete Everest all had the same favorite airplane, the North American F-86 Sabre. 
But there's a twist. Everest was the only pilot who ever clarified my question by saying prop or jet. Well, for prop, it was the P-51 Mustang and for jet, the F-86. And then he followed it up with, you know, I got to fly the F-16 recently. That's not a bad little airplane either. Everest was always the master of the understatement. For the Navy, uh, we have Lieutenant Bob Elder. One of his first assignments as a new naval aviator was to fly protective cover in his Douglas SBD over the launch of the Doolittle Raid on Tokyo in April 1942. He mentioned looking straight down on the carrier as Doolittle's B-25 left the deck. After World War II, he conducted carrier suitability trials for the P-51 Mustang, renamed Seahorse, aboard the USS Shangri-La. Elder flew F-2H Banshees and F-9F Panthers during the Korean War, and then made more than 1,000 carrier landings in 35 different naval aircraft while developing jet operations on carriers in the mid-1950s. In 1958, as Director of Flight Test Operations for the Naval Air Test Center at Patuxent River, Maryland, Elder evaluated two next-generation jet fighters in an intense flyoff competition between the Mach 2 McDonald F-4H Phantom at top and the Vought XF-8U3 Super Crusader in what he called the shootout at the OK Corral. Following his naval career, Bob Elder served as chief of flight test for the Northrop Corporation and was involved in the development of such advanced high-performance aircraft as the T-38 Talon, the F-5 Freedom Fighter, the F-20 Tiger Shark, and YF-17 Prototype, which led to the F-18 Hornet. Bob Elder's favorite airplane? The Crusader III. He loved flying this jet. He took it in a zoom climb to 87,300 feet wearing a pressure suit and reached a speed of Mach 2.4. He said it was the best flying airplane of his career. So what can you say about an aviation career that spanned nearly half a century, beginning in biplane trainers and ending in Mach 3 jets? Fitz Fulton flew in the Berlin airlift and the Korean War. He then tested all the latest exotic bombers at Edwards Air Force Base during the mid-1950s. He went on to fly launch aircraft for all the famed X-planes, soon gaining the well-deserved title, Father of the Motherships. Fitz launched the Bell X-2 seen here, the hypersonic X-15, the famed lifting bodies, and even the shuttle orbiter Enterprise from NASA's Boeing 747. He served as command pilot on the triple sonic North American XB-70 Valkyrie experimental bomber flying for both the Air Force and NASA. However, Fulton's favorite airplane, the Convair B-58 Hustler. He was project pilot for this airplane at Edwards, has many hours uh, supersonic, reached an altitude record of uh, 87,000 feet and uh, just uh, loved flying this airplane. He just said it was a tremendous machine. He was very proud to be part of the development process on the Hustler. And you can't talk about Fitz Fulton without talking about Joe Engel. Growing up in Kansas, Joe Engel always dreamed of flying fighters, a dream that came true as a new Air Force pilot assigned to the 479th Fighter Wing at George Air Force Base, California, flying the North American F-100. Advancing rapidly through the pilot ranks, he attended the U.S. Air Force Test Pilot School at Edwards and was assigned to the X-15 rocket program at age 31. Joe was the youngest pilot ever to fly that airplane. In June 1965, Engel earned his astronaut wings, flying the X-15 to an altitude of 280,600 feet. He then became an Apollo astronaut and was bumped from the final lunar landing of the Apollo 17 but he went on to fly the Space Shuttle Orbiter's Enterprise, Columbia, and Discovery. Here we see the uh, fourth uh, test flight of the Enterprise on the approach and landing test program, uh, where uh, Joe Engel uh, flew the shuttle the first time without the streamlined uh, fairing covering the rocket exhaust. And he went from 23,000 feet launch altitude to the landing on the lake bed in two minutes, 15 seconds. 
Here we see Joe and his co-pilot, Commander Dick Truly, after landing the Orbiter Enterprise on the approach and landing test flight. Typical of uh, Joe's keen sense of humor, uh, both pilots emerged from the shuttle's hatch wearing World War II style helmets and goggles. Classic. On STS-2, Columbia's second flight in orbit, Joe not only became the first pilot to fly a used spaceship per se, but he made the only hand-flown re-entry from Mach 25 in space to a precision landing on the lake bed at Edwards, and he made it look easy. His final flight was as commander of the shuttle orbiter Discovery. Joe's favorite airplane, hands down, the X-15. In Joe's words, it was just a tremendous flying airplane. Originally a test pilot for Bell Aircraft, Alvin M. Tex Johnston moved to Boeing and became a chief test pilot for that company, flying their new Air Force jet bombers and transports, including making the first uh, flight of the uh, B-52 prototypes for the Strato Fortress. Here we see Tex with uh, President Eisenhower at Seattle. But Tex will forever be known as the pilot who performed not one, but two graceful barrel rolls over the Seattle Gold Cup speedboat races in August of 1955, demonstrating Boeing's new Dash 80 jet transport for all the world to see. That single iconic event set the stage for the company's eventual dominance in U.S. jet airliner manufacturing. And to think that it all started with the 367-80 prototype jet transport. That airplane led to an entire family of Boeing jets like the 707, Jet Stratoliner, as it was originally called, the 707 Intercontinental, the 747 World's First Jumbo Jet, and today's Digital Age 777 and 787 Dreamliner. So what was Tex Johnson's favorite airplane? The B-47. He considered this one of the most significant airplanes ever flown. Why? Well, it was the first large aircraft to use a 35-degree sweep a uh, high laminar flow uh, swept wing with uh, jet engines and pods uh, slung below the wings uh, under pylons. Uh, it's pioneered uh, structural manufacturing components and uh, new methodologies for building large jet airplanes. And this in essence is the great grandfather of every Boeing jet airliner flying today. And when you think about it, just about every jet transport that has this similar kind of configuration, really a revolutionary airplane in its time. An honor graduate and football star at West Point as World War II was coming to an end, Jack Broughton was destined for greatness. He became the second leader of the Air Force Thunderbirds. He was the youngest person and the only captain to do so in the team's 70-year history, flying the uh, Republic F-84 Thunderjet, the F-84F Thunderstreak, and North American F-100 Super Sabre. He went on to command the 5th Fighter Interceptor Squadron at Minot Air Force Base, North Dakota, and became Vice Wing Commander of the 355th TAC Fighter Wing at Karat, Thailand, during the war in Southeast Asia. But Broughton also has the distinction of having flown every production aircraft built by Republic Aviation Corporation, beginning with the P-47 that he flew in Berlin after the war, the F-84 Thunderjet that he flew in Korea, the Thunderstreak, and the F-105 Thunder Chiefs of Vietnam. Well, I thought his favorite airplane would be a slam dunk, but despite that, Jack Broughton's favorite, the Convair F-106 Delta Dart. The 106 is powered by the same 25,000 pound thrust Pratt & Whitney J-75 turbojet as the 105, but the Dart is almost 20,000 pounds lighter. And that gives this airplane its superb handling and performance characteristics and Jack basically said it was the best airplane he flew in his career. While most people recognize John Glenn as being the first American to orbit the earth, not many know that as a Marine aviator on exchange with the Air Force during the Korean War, Glenn flew the North American F-86 Sabre. They may also not know that Glenn became the first pilot to fly coast to coast across the US at supersonic speed in July, 1957, during Project Bullet. Flying this Vought F-8U-1P photo recon crusader, 
uh, from Naval Air Station Los Alamitos, California to New York's Floyd Bennett Field while refueling from North American AJ Savages along the way. Glenn made the transcontinental flight in just three hours and 23 minutes at a speed of 725 miles an hour. In 1959, he was selected as an astronaut for NASA's Project Mercury and flew his Friendship 7 capsule for three orbits around the Earth in February of 1962. I had the honor of meeting Colonel Glenn at Maxwell Air Force Base during a historical program in the late 1990s and soon began talking about his Marine uh, aviator career. But when I asked him about Project Bullet, I remember reading about his landing at Floyd Bennett uh, when I was about 12 years old, and we became the internal uh, kids talk about cool jets for the rest of the afternoon. It's one of my favorite all-time memories. And yes, as you might imagine, John Glenn's favorite airplane is the magnificent F-8 Crusader. Last but not least, we have Tony Levere. Like Tex Johnston, Levere was one of the very few legendary factory test pilots that did not have military flight experience before becoming a company test pilot. Levere was a noted Southern California racing pilot in the late 1930s, hired into Lockheed on the wartime P-38 program flying that airplane, and he later made the inaugural flights of the XP-80 Grey Ghost, the XF-90 Penetration Fighter, the U-2 High Altitude Surveillance Aircraft, and the sleek Mach 2 F-104 Starfighter. And with all those amazing aircraft in his logbook, you are not going to believe what Tony Levere's favorite airplane was. It was the T-33 Shooting Star. And when I asked him why, he replied in his typical gruff but humble manner, because that's the airplane that gave the world jet pilots. God bless Tony Levere. Oh, my own favorite airplane. Hmm, funny you should ask. Well... Uh, in my career, I've been uh, very fortunate to have flown in uh, quite a few aircraft, many military airplanes, total is uh, 241 different types of aircraft at the, at the moment. And uh, if I had to pick a favorite that was just, I thought, the coolest airplane ever, it would have to be the F-105 Thunder Chief. And uh, yes, I'm biased. I'm a Republic brat. And so there's the reason for that choice. But if it was an airplane that I flew myself, it has to be the uh, Czech Blahnik L-13, uh, two-seat, fully aerobatic sailplane. Uh, just where do we even begin? It's just an airplane that can do everything. I've given rides to 77-year-old grandmothers and seven-year-old kids, uh, ex-Air Force pilots, you name it. I've uh, given more than 2,000 flights and uh, 2,000 rides in this airplane. And uh, it's just a joy. Uh, the VNE is 139 knots, and it stalls at 28. <laughs> so it's just really... Uh, covers the gamut. Uh, the forward swept wings give it a really tight turning radius, has tremendous uh, soaring potential. And uh, it's an airplane, I own two of them actually over the years and uh, just an airplane I always love to fly. So there you have it, a look at 10 legendary pilots and me uh, in uh, choosing our favorite airplanes in our careers. I'd like to say special thanks to the great folks that helped make this presentation possible. And thank you for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Uh, we'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel. And uh, I would like to mention that uh, if you want to see earlier videos, if you're new to the channel, want to see some of the earlier videos over the past two and a half years, just click on the videos uh, button at the top of the screen and it'll take you to the menu with all the different programs that we have. It's about 140 different uh, programs to date. But thank you for watching. And until next time, Take care.